A very good day to you people. My name is Mohit and guys today we'll talk about uh, attribute selectors and pseudo class selectors. Guys before I actually start talking about it let me so show you a uh, PowerPoint slideshow by pressing F5 uh, on my keyboard. Uh, <coughs> okay let's first understand what uh, attributes really mean. Uh, now any uh, HTML uh, element can uh, have attributes inside it. So something like a marquee tag or a para tag, maybe an h1 tag, it could be an a for anchor tag, all could uh, have uh, attributes uh, inside the opening of the starting tag. They never uh, appear in the closing tag guys. All right. I think it will become uh, much more clear in the next uh, slide. Now here guys what you see in front of you is the opening marquee tag. Then we have the different attributes like behavior, bg color class, data field, uh, data formats, uh, height, edge space which is horizontal space, id, loop okay etc 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 so every word that you see which is underlined and is in the color green is actually the attribute okay and then we have the closing marquee tag so guys as you can see the attributes appear in the opening tags or the opening um, elements opening tags rather okay let's uh, check the next slideshow now guys uh, I'm sure most of you are aware of the audio and the video tags uh, in HTML5 and uh, now SRC which is it stands for source controls autoplay loop all these are uh, attributes for the audio element <coughs> okay uh, controls autoplay and loop uh, don't exactly have a value out here but that doesn't mean that they are not attributes okay so they, they appear standalone without uh, any values that's fine and guys let's consider this example now uh, the rule of the style uh, that you see on the screen implies that um, every h1 element that has an uh, attribute uh, called title should get the color tomato okay uh, it, it if i read out it says matches all h1 elements with a title attribute now the title uh, attribute gives uh, that extra information about uh, the element okay now uh, guys before i actually go on to the other slides uh, what i'll do is i'll take these examples and put them in dreamweaver and show it to you i think that'll be much better for you to understand what i'll do is uh, Give me a minute. Okay, guys, I'll copy this much, the style that is, and uh, then, guys, this is Dreamweaver CS 5.5. Let me collapse this area, guys. I'm sure you understand that internal styles are written in the head of the document. All right. So, in the head of the section, let me uh, create. A, a, a style tag okay style and then uh, let me say type now type is an attribute for style tag okay let me close the tag good now guys uh, I'll just paste whatever I've brought from uh, the um, PowerPoint slideshow so the rule or the attribute selector means that uh, all h1 elements uh, that have an attribute called title should get the color tomato let's check it out so I'll go to the body area and uh, let me start with the an h1 tag then the title tag alright and uh, let the title tag say uh, attribute selectors alright and then let me say um heading one out here let me close the tag so guys um, if I click on the refresh button now the heading one should have the color tomato which indeed it has let me go back to PowerPoint all right let me run the slideshow once again okay we'll talk about this example now this example means that every h2 element in the document which is aligned left which has an attribute align uh, with the value set to left should get the color lime let's check it out let's copy this bit okay and drop it under the h1 uh, attribute selector out here okay so now this rule means that uh, any h2 element which has an align uh, attribute set to left should get the color lime let's check it out too okay so let me type an h2 opening tag out here and uh, 
let it have the attribute align which I'll set it to left okay and then inside the h2 element so let's say heading 2 close the tag up click on the refresh button and indeed uh, heading 1 has the color line okay let's get back to the PowerPoint slideshow okay let's check the slides okay now guys uh, let's uh, le let's talk about this example this example says that if there's a table which has an attribute width okay and that width has a value which contains uh, these uh, the number zero zero then the table should have the background color peach puff it says uh, if I read out matches all table elements with a width attribute that has a value that contains zero zero okay so let's check this example as well let me copy this bit let me go back to Dreamweaver let me paste it out here in the opening and the closing uh, style tags okay uh, which means that I need to get in a table so I'll say insert I'll say table okay I'm happy with three rows and three columns uh, a size of 200 now guys the table width is 200 and uh, the attribute selector that we had brought over says that if uh, the table has the uh, uh, an attribute called width which has a value set to zero zero then uh, it's supposed to get the color peach puff okay so since 200 contains zero zero so this should uh, happen and indeed indeed it uh, does happen if you notice out here the size is two zero zero which contains um, the number zero zero you can check it out here as well in the opening table tag uh, the value is two zero zero wonderful so even if I were to change it to three zero zero okay shouldn't make a difference at all that's fine perfecto let me go back to uh, the slideshow and check the next slide okay now guys uh, here you see uh, what it actually means is that if there's a table on your document and it has an attribute width which starts with the number 5 then it can acquire a background color of wheat okay so let's check this out as well so let me copy this bit a control C and a control V in Dreamweaver what I'll do is I'll uh, replace the rule that I brought over earlier okay this rule will be replaced by the new rule that I brought so guys if I click on the refresh button you will see that uh, the background colors actually vanish that's because this table is 300 pixels in size and it does not start with the number 5 okay this attribute selector that I brought over or this rule of the style implies only if, if the width starts with the number 5 should it get acquired the background color wheat but it does not uh, in fact if I actually go to the opening table tag and change the width of the document to a 500 now it starts with the number 5 and uh, guys you can see that it's actually acquired the background color of wheat which is perfect which is fine that's exactly what I was looking to um, see wonderful let me go back to the PowerPoint so let's uh, <coughs> continue with the slideshow guys um, let me check the next slide up okay now this example guys um, implies or means that if you have a table on your HTML document and uh, <coughs> it has an attribute width and that width ends with the number 55 then the table is allowed to capture the background uh, color which is blanked element okay so if I read out uh, the description it says uh, matches all table elements with a width attribute that has a value that ends with 55 let's check that out so let me copy this bit control C drop it in Dreamweaver so what I'll do is I'll replace line number 11 a control V out here so <coughs> as long as um, this table ends with the number 55 the width has a value ending with number 55 it should work but that is not the case that's because guys if you notice out here in the in the opening table tag the width is 500 so it ends with five uh, it ends with zero zero and not with 55 so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this zero zero to a 55 and then guys 
the rule should apply and in indeed it does so now the table opening tag has an attribute called width which ends with 55 and uh, once that happens according to the rule that we have brought over from uh, PowerPoint says that the background color should be blanked element and indeed this is blanked element alright guys now that I've uh, I've, I've talked about uh, commonly used uh, attribute selectors the ones that are my favorites okay there are two more uh, favorites that I carry and they are called uh, the uh, they're not exactly um, attribute selectors but they are pseudo selectors uh, pseudo class selectors and they are um, they are the uh, colon empty and the colon uh, not okay now colon empty colon not are pseudo class selectors also guys you must have uh, encountered a colon hover a colon active um, a colon link a colon focus now usually uh, pseudo class selectors have this uh, prefix colon okay but here in this tutorial I'm only going to talk about the colon not and the colon empty let's uh, talk about the colon empty first okay guys let me put in certain numbers in each TD or uh, the table cells okay except one barring one so this guys is one single cell that I've um, left I've deliberately left it empty but guys if I actually check in the code view it's not exactly empty it has a value of and ampersand nbsp which does not mean that it's empty so what I'll have to do is I'll have to remove this nbsp means non breaking space guys I have to remove this non breaking space now this renders uh, it renders this specific cell completely completely empty okay now let me start with the colon empty rule so let me drop down the contextual selector to a compound and uh, let me then say a table which contains uh, anything which is empty a colon empty a uh, pseudo class selector means that um, any tag which is empty does not have any children okay should get this specific rule so obviously uh, the cell the table cell that we had left empty does not contain any text and does not uh, contain any children okay so it's in the true sense empty and then it should acquire the background color that I'm about to give and let me say it should get the background color corn silk so a corn silk out here and let me say okay let me take uh, a live view guys uh, it's very subtle okay but it's actually this empty cell is actually a little different from uh, the other cells uh, which uh, carry the background color blank almond now now corn silk is very close to it uh, I'm not so sure you can easily make out let me just do uh, let me change uh, corn silk to let's say mm, let me go with the, to make it a little more clear let me try papaya whip <laughs> it's 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 uh, it's uh, still uh, very subtle let me try a white smoke yeah that 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 makes it pretty clear so guys uh, the empty cell is carrying the <coughs> background color white smoke now as i said i'll also talk about yet another pseudo class uh, selector which is the colon knot and let's see how it works so if i say uh, uh, the new compound rule should say table space um, colon not and in brackets in the round brackets empty okay so basically what this means is in your table any any element that's not empty that's not empty so what I've done is um, I've combined two pseudo class selector the not as well as the empty okay so any cell which is not empty should uh, get a specific um, uh, property and uh, the property that I want to give it is mm, let's say I want to change the color of the font to a pound sign 900 as well as um, let's make it uh, italic and say okay 
and indeed guys every cell that's not empty has acquired that specific color so guys um, today we talked about uh, the different uh, not all of them but we spoke about a few commonly used uh, attribute selectors as well as I touched upon two uh, of my favorites uh, the colon empty and the colon not uh, pseudo class selectors I hope you uh, enjoyed this tutorial you have a good day guys I'll see you uh, very soon with yet another dream tutorial or it could be flash with access to 3 peace